Today is the Sunday of Divine Mercy. Our gathering song is Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. friends, welcome together as we continue the joy of this Easter journey and in particular this Sunday on Divine Mercy as we see this beautiful image of, of Christ reaching out to us, to all humanity, promising us his love, his mercy, his forgiveness as we hear the gospel. Together then as God's people, let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The mercy of God is a gift to all of us. Let us pray then this mercy as we acknowledge our sin and prepare for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I on us, forgive our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. You are 
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions 
and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith. 
to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. According to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord.
My friends, we welcome you again on Divine Mercy Sunday with a beautiful image that we've been given. And this particular feast of Divine Mercy Sunday, as we perhaps you remember, was established by Pope St. John Paul II just about 20 years ago. So it's one of the newest feasts of the church here, the Sunday after, after um, Easter. For very good reasons, the thinking of the Holy Father at the time he established the feast was for us to think about these Easter sacraments in the normal year, in the life so different from what we are having now. In the normal year, we would be celebrating the baptism of new members of the church, confirmation, the feeding of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, these powerful Easter sacraments that, that all this Easter season we are reflecting on, wondering about what they mean for our lives and how we can live our life according to that great gift of God's mercy to us. You know, if we could, if it were possible to take the message of the gospel, the teachings of Jesus throughout the New Testament, and boil it down to one simple phrase, I wonder what that might be, a little sound bite. Jesus took the teachings of the Ten Commandments of all the Law and the Prophets, and he went right down to the very core of what they are, to love God, to love your neighbor. If we can love God with our whole heart, mind, and soul, love our neighbor as ourselves, and all that flows from those two basic statements, then we are living a life according to the mind of God. What can we do with the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament? Love God, love your neighbor, of course. This little sound bite might be something like two words, mercy and peace, mercy and peace. What brings peace about in our life? What brings peace about in our spiritual life is the experience of our encounter with the risen Christ and the gift of his mercy, his forgiveness that comes to us. That's what brings us peace. That's what brings us life and connects us directly to Christ himself. The beautiful resurrection stories, particularly the one today, it's a familiar one to us about Thomas. And sometimes I always thought we're a little bit too harsh on the doubting Thomas. Which one among us and the apostles themselves, if the role was reversed and Thomas had been there on that first Easter day, as this first appearance of Jesus took place that Sunday evening, John tells us today, if Thomas had been there and some other apostle was not, say Matthew, maybe Peter, wouldn't they have asked the same question? Wouldn't they have also doubted? when they have also at least wondered if it was true or not, and said, I want the same experience that you have had. You have seen the risen Christ. You have heard him speak, you've touched him. I did not have that. I want to have that before I can step forth and confirm that great truth. So yes, Thomas doubted, but his doubt was not that unreasonable considering the fantastic story that the apostles were telling him. And so on this first Easter night, Jesus appears. The apostles were hiding, were hiding in fear because they knew that they were known as the followers of Jesus of Nazareth who had just been crucified three days before and they feared for their own lives that they too may be arrested by the authorities and maybe the same fate would happen to them that happened to Jesus. And so they were hiding, hiding in fear. The door was closed, the door was locked, John tells us. And in the middle of this tense existence, Jesus comes to them. He comes to them and the first word out of his mouth is the common Jewish greeting, Shalom. Peace be with you. That was something that they had heard many times that perhaps they had met, perhaps said themselves to their to other companions. Shalom. It's a greeting of peace, very common. 
But in the case of Jesus here, the risen Christ among them, it means far more. It means far more than just a common greeting. It means, may my goodness, my grace be with you. Jesus comes not to seek some kind of retribution, some sort of revenge, some sort of, okay, it's payback time kind of thing with the apostles who all scattered from him just three days before when he needed them the most. He came to forgive them. He came to bring them his peace, his comfort, his assurance that all that they had experienced had meaning and purpose to it. And now they do. And once they are given that power to forgive themselves, in this certain passage we see the foundation of the sacrament of reconciliation. Christ has given to his church the power to forgive sin. Only God forgives, but in his name we forgive in the sacrament of reconciliation. And that sacrament is meant to be an experience of an encounter with the risen Christ the divine physician, the merciful forgiver. And so this forgiveness that Christ extends to his apostles, he breathes his spirit on them. He gives them that assurance of his life flowing in them and through them out to the church. So this beautiful foundation, Jesus' mercy, his peace, is what he wishes for all of us at this Easter time and certainly whenever we may encounter him. A week later, we recognize that Thomas was not there. And so a week later, the next Sunday, which would be today, he appears. Jesus again appears. This time Thomas is with him. He wants to touch. Jesus knew what was in Thomas's mind. He says, Thomas, look at the wounds. You can touch them, you can see it's me, flesh and bones. The same Jesus who died on the cross is now showing his wounds to his own apostles to confirm that this is not a ghost, it's not a hallucination. It's Jesus risen and alive again in a new form, yet familiar to them. The same Jesus who loved them, who they followed, is now confirmed in the resurrection. What does Thomas do? He doesn't hesitate, but here's the faith of the Easter season for us. My Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, Thomas professes great faith. So even though he may have doubted for a moment, for a short time, now he proclaims this Easter faith in the risen Christ, my Lord and my God. You know, this is the first time in the New Testament that Jesus is named as God. The first time that he is named as God after the resurrection by Thomas himself. So let us absorb these great truths in our life, this gift of God's compassion, his mercy for all of us, the gift that he gives to his church that he extends to all of us, especially at this time in which we really need a great healer and peacemaker and a restorer to come among us. May God give us his, may Jesus, the risen Christ, offer his great healing mercy to us, his mercy, his peace. Let us be people of mercy and let us be people of peace to others as well. Let us now proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten. Consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
empowered by our faith, we now bring our needs to the Lord in hope. For the church, may God's Holy Spirit guide us in proclaiming the truth and the hope of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. For peace and justice in the world, may Easter grace be with all nations and peoples in turning away from division. We pray to the Lord. For those who struggle each day to make ends meet, may God grant them a spirit of fortitude. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, May they share with the saints the reward of eternal joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us add our own intentions in silent prayer. For all of these. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son's gift of mercy to us. Hear the prayers we bring in hope and in joy. In the name of Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. So let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those who are brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but on this day above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying he has destroyed our death by rising he has restored our life therefore overcome with paschal joy every land every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim <laughs> salvation the hand you extend to sinners the way by which your peace is offered to us when we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins you brought us back to be reconciled O Lord so that co converted at last to you we might love one another through your son who for our sake was handed over to death and now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your holy spirit that they may become the body and blood of your son whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries for when he was about to set us free as he reclined at supper he himself took bread into his hands and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, <clears throat> he took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, <clears throat> who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Alexander, our Bishop, Peter, his assistant, and all the bishops in your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together 
with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Queen of Peace, with your blessed, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue whom, whom you have, who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that in the, by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us un unity and peace in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And now offer his peace to one another. takes away the sin of our world. How blessed are we who are brought to this supper of the Lamb. Lord, amen. Friends at home joining us, let's pray together this prayer of spiritual communion as together as God's people we long to share in this bread of life again. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. of divine mercy given to the church through the apparitions to St. Faustino in the 1930s. I thought we would take a moment on this Divine Mercy Sunday and pray before this image, this very beautiful prayer as part of the, part of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. So if you at home, if you would like to kneel now and we'll look at, focus our attention on this sacred image. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. O blood and water, which is gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. And let us pray.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our redemption or reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Again, thank you for joining us for this Holy Mass, and we pray that maybe we will see some movement in the month of May coming up, the month of our Blessed Mother. Let's pray to her that she'll intercede with her son and make things begin to open up gradually over time. We pray perhaps during her, her month in which we honor Mary during that month of May. We don't have a bulletin as we, as we always do. It's online, but uh, not a lot of new things to report. We're just kind of on hold, as you know. But I did want to just add a few quick things. Um, last Wednesday, and it seems to be uh, uh, making the Wednesday a video that I've been sending to the parishioners uh, about various thoughts and messages and words of support and prayers. And I've got a lot of words coming back that a lot of you appreciate that. And somebody suggested to me, and I was thinking of it uh, in, a, in a way too, that maybe that video would be a great opportunity to answer any questions you might have. We have a lot of questions. We've got a lot of time to do a lot of thinking these days. And so uh, if you have any questions about the parish, any questions about the church, about the Mass, maybe things you've wondered about, you've never gotten a direct answer to. If you have any of those sorts of questions that you'd like to, um, I could take some time with them. If you want to send them to me during the week uh, on the parish email, my father Tim at qpsalem.org, uh, feel free to do that. Many of you have that email, of course. And uh, those types of questions, I may not get to all of them, even if it's one or two, it's worth spending some time on them. So you're welcome to send those in anytime before each Wednesday so that at the Wednesday recording, I can try to answer some of those for you. Uh, lastly, again, I want to, last, uh, last Wednesday, the message, I talked about some of the people behind the scenes that continue to make some wonderful things happen here at the parish. And I just want to add to that as well, by no means that I leave them out on purpose, by any means, but our, our parish staff, as you know, continues behind the scenes, although in a different form, a different way. Patty Black at the front desk, greeting, answering the telephone, front line, doing a wonderful job. Um, uh, Michelle uh, Unger, uh, working with uh, Children's RE and baptism preparation and that kind of thing. Um, certainly, uh, Sherry Posadel, working with our youth in the confirmation program, she's been in touch with them about, and Eddie, Eddie Fidel, who's been working with our RCIA candidates in faith formation. So this is all going on quietly behind the scenes in various forms. So just want you to know that we continue to serve, we're here for you, and we want you to continue, of course, to feel part of our family and to be here for us as well. God bless you all, then the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. Thank you.